as you might have guessed by now, I love absolutely everything about retro gaming. Arcade halls of yesteryear, the 8 bits, the 16 bits, the programming wizards and engineers, and all the other personalities that help put video games front and center. The good games, the bad games, and the ugly. It's all the same to me, but this video remembers it all. I'll never forget the first time I played 1943. I went with my dad to Scotland. We ended up in a motorway service station in Glasgow. Whilst my dad was getting drinks and food, I was playing on this machine. In the reflection of the glass, I noticed a few lads and one of them ran towards the machine. It was like a flying kick off the cover of Target Renegade. I ducked and his foot went right through the glass. Good old 720. And check out the size of that ghetto blaster. 720 promised radical stunts and epic flips, but that's only after a mountain of broken dreams and shattered skateboards. It will draw you in like a moth to a flame. Risking life and limb on a half pipe was a rite of passage. I feel the need, the need for Afterburner. All right, strap yourselves in. You see, Afterburner wasn't just a game. It was an experience. You were Maverick from Top Gun. Sadly, Goose was not included. And I remember the cockpit, especially tumbling headfirst into a command center. For a moment there, I was Maverick. Ah, Alien Syndrome. What a game. I must admit though, the first thing I'd do if I heard there was an alien invasion is run and hide. This guy wants to save everyone. Luckily, there's a two-player co-op mode, so he's not alone. It was glorious, it was chaotic, it was from Sega. Hold on to your joysticks, this is Amadar, and you play as a pixelated gorilla, armed with a paint roller. Prepare to be bewildered, frustrated, and entertained. It's a game where you need to expand your turf. It's also a highly cloned arcade game, and I had it on the Amstrad CPC in the guise of Oh Mummy. So, go bananas. Next up, Arkanoid Revenge of Doe. In a world where sequels often flop, this one soared like an 8-bit phoenix. It took the classic brick-breaking concept and jazzed it up to maximum. This second game is far from shizzle, and it's a sequel that dared to outdo its predecessor. We've all heard of steroids. Well, Blasteroids took that and injected it with copious amounts of caffeine. I wonder if I'll live long enough to one day attend an asteroid fueled rave. Pixelated space cowboys will no doubt prefer the original, but like the original, this one shoots for the stars, only this time it blasts right through them. Saddle up partner, this is Bank Panic. Yeehaw! Trigger happy spaghetti western chaos cowboys will have bags of fun defending the bank from pixelated bad guys. This truly is a nostalgic trip down memory lane. Uh, barman, I'll have a pixelated cowboy cocktail, please. Yeehaw! I'm no barman. Stick em up, fool! Ah! Ah, battle zone. A vector-filled wonderland of yesteryear. I can only imagine at the time, this was an 80s kid's virtual reality. It was all out tank warfare. Yes, the graphics were rudimentary, but 80s kids use this thing called imagination. Ah, Berserk by Stern. Now, Eugene Jarvis actually modified this game and turned it into a twin stick shooter. That's pretty stinking cool. Now, Berserk will suck you in and spit you out. It's one man against an army of evil robots. It's a relentless onslaught of bouncing bolts. Next up, Bionic Commander. I had this on the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum Plus 3, the 128K version. Both were absolute fantastic arcade conversions. But nothing beats the arcade original. Why walk when you can fly using a cable? Bravo Capcom for making us all feel like grappling gods. Here we have Bomb Jack, another timeless classic. Don't just collect the bombs, collect the bombs in order for a bonus. This way you get extra points as well, and we all know what points make. That's right, prizes. It's a reminder that gaming's past holds gems worth revisiting. As far as I know, the 8-bit conversions were all good as well, with the Amstrad CPC being a standout title. Next up, Vasconian. 
I think this is probably one of my favourite games, if not my favourite. And that probably sounds like a daft thing to say. And that's not based on nostalgia. It's probably more a desire for simplicity. And you know, sometimes I think it's because the past pixelates prettier than the present. The home conversions were really good as well. Next we have Bubble Bobble. Now the second I say Baskonian is probably my favourite game of all time. This bugger comes along. The difference here is that I think this is probably my favourite two player game of all time. The 8 bit conversions were also a thing of beauty. Well zap me sideways and tickle my pixels. Another one of my favourites, Buck Rogers. Now this one did have a few flaws. Uh, one, it allowed you to continue, but two, more importantly, even when you continued, you kept the same score. So that means that you could get yourself right high up on the score table as long as you kept pumping in the coins. Despite all that, I still really enjoyed it. Good old burger time, eh? Who thought you could have this much fun flipping burgers? Hold on to that ketchup though, because the concept of this game is like trying to eat a full English breakfast on a roller coaster. In other words, it's nigh on impossible to make a burger, especially on later stages. Or so I thought. Stick with it and you'll be flipping those burgers in no time at all. Centipede. Now, I was late to the party with Centipede in the arcade. I experienced a game similar to this on the Commodore 16 called Pod. Now, when I finally did experience Centipede, I was absolutely blown away and it makes the list. Chase HQ. After Outrun, Chase HQ from Taito was the turbocharged adrenaline shot we all needed. In fact, there's an argument that still rages on to this day between the arcade conversion to the ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad CPC, i.e. which is the best. Of course, we all know the answer to that, but this is a fantastic game. Just don't mention the C64. Ah, uh, here it is, Contra. A two-player symphony of camaraderie and chaos. It's a game that taught us precision, patience, and the beauty of a laser. And despite the difficulty, we loved our punishment. So non-stop action, aliens galore, and a big bad bag of testosterone. So lock and load, my friends. Lock and load. Circus Charlie is another game I didn't discover until late on. You know what? I had this game called Big Top Barney from Players Software on the Amstrad CPC. It wasn't crap, but it paled in comparison to the excellent Circus Charlie. They say war isn't pretty, but Commando, no question, is a thing of beauty. Graphics are well defined in a cartoonish haze, and like a charging rhino, you blast through waves of enemies with all the grace of John Rambo. The only thing missing is a tank and a rocket launcher. I say that because Commando ain't here to play nice. I think it's really easy for Crystal Castles to slip under the radar. I don't recall the home conversions being all that, but the arcade game, I remember getting palpitations playing it. Our protagonist, Bentley Bear, needs to avoid all sorts of wicked creatures and perform several daredevil jumps. Prepare for Defender, a game that throws you right in at the deep end of an interstellar battle. If you're not swearing at the screen, you're most likely doing it wrong. After all these years, I went back in and it took me a while to master the controls. But once you finally nail it, you'll feel like a space ace all over again. Dig Dug is like an English country garden mixed with The Shining, but never creepy. Although pumping an enemy full of air, that's not a nice way to go. I'd much prefer somebody drop a rock on my head. But victory is so sweet when you finally conquer a level just as entertaining now as it was back then. Ah, Double Dragon. It was beat em up brilliance. A pixelated blender of martial arts. This 80s landscape was a street brawler's dream come true. Today, Double Dragon is dripping with 80s nostalgia. And these guys knew how to fight dirty. Knee to the gut? Check. Elbow to the face? Check. Spinning roundhouse kick? Yippee-ki-yay. Eh? Donkey Kong was nothing short of awesome. And it was the game that set the stage for Mario's illustrious career. Each level was challenging, and there was a memorable villain in Donkey Kong. But what happened to Pauline, our damsel in distress? And also, my eight-year-old still finds joy in its simplicity. What a legacy. 
Who's bad? Dragon Ninja? Or should I say, Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja? I don't care anymore. Well, that's a lie. I never cared. It's a great game with a shizzle now. What is important is that it's a two-player cooperative game and it's a beat-em-up. President Ronnie has been kidnapped. Are you a bad enough dude to get him back? My goodness, final fight. And get this, the gameplay has lost none of its charm. It's nearly as playable as it ever was. Not to mention a bloody hard challenge. This was a stomping arcade hit. And did anybody ever play the Mega CD or Sega CD conversion? My god, they left nothing out. And it was as good, if not better, than this. Ah, Flying Shark. Two words, sheer playability. And that still doesn't cut it. And the graphics, they almost fly by too quickly. You don't even get a chance to gawp at them. But they were fantastic for the time. Sometimes breathtaking, you get three lives, and trust me, you'll need them. This one stole all my pocket money. Ah, elevator action. I used to love this game. I had it on the Amstrad CPC. The arcade conversion was so-so. You've basically got to collect a load of secret documents and you do that by finding and entering all the red doors. Once you've got all the secret documents, then you've got to head back to your car. The enemies can shoot the lights and it's even more difficult to see them. It is brilliant. Poor Frogger. There's so many ways he can die. You can get run over by a truck, the timer running down, staying on a lily pad too long, missing the home, or being eaten. You can even fall into the river. So it's up to you to keep poor little Froggy alive alive oh. I've probably never said this about any other game, but this is flawless. And the background music is timeless. All this for a lady frog. There are people alive today, kids and adults that have never experienced Gallagher. My goodness, I hope you're watching this video. Put down Roblox and stop playing Angry Birds just for a wee while. Everybody needs to experience Gallagher. One of the most difficult games of all time, Ghosts and Goblins. Apparently it was the sixth best selling computer game in the UK and the NES version sold over 1.6 million carts. Here's my thoughts on it, one of the greatest video games ever made, truly groundbreaking. We had to wait two years, but Goals and Ghost was worth the wait. Best graphics, best sequel and the coolest bosses. It was also probably the best arcade conversion ever on the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. It was a time in the arcade where every coin spent was a step closer to valiantly saving the princess. Ah, look at this one, Golden Axe. The perfect blend of medieval fantasy. Dry your eyes, mate. Wipe away those nostalgic tears. You can still face off against hordes of skeletal minions and ride majestic beasts. Special mention needs to be made to the Sega Mega Drive arcade conversion and the Commodore Amiga. A nostalgic gem. Good old Gradius. In this one, failure came fast. And unlike the home conversions, every credit counts. There's some people that say it's really hard. And yes, I agree, but it's not impossible. For me, this is the ultimate fossil to dig up and play. Green Beret. Oh my god, I had this on the Amstrad CPC. And it didn't scroll. It was like a flick screen and it paused. It was goddamn awful. But get this, I couldn't stop playing it. Seriously, don't ask. This, on the other hand, is an absolute dream. The stuff of legends. And it's hard as nails. Kids today wax lyrical about demon souls being difficult. <laughs> Based on the Cuban Batista regime of the late 1950s, we've got Guerrilla War. And get this, the joysticks rotated an innovation over the twin stick shooter. I played it on the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC, but naturally, as you can imagine, without the rotating joysticks, it made progress almost impossible. I like this almost as much as Ikari Warriors. Designed by the legend that is Yoshiki Okamoto, this is Gyrus. But listen to this, this is the second and last game that Okamoto designed for Konami. They sacked him over a pay dispute. He soon joined Capcom where he wrote 1942 and produced Street Fighter 2. This was the guy that did Time Pilot for Christ's sake. I mentioned earlier that um, Basconian 
as my favourite game of all time, but I think it might be this, Ikari Warriors. It changes on different days, it all depends on what side of the bed I get up on. Now the Amstrad CPC conversion was arcade perfect, as in it got as close as humanly possible. And to top it off, it's a fantastic two player game. Get to the chopper! Some say one of the weirdest games ever made. Designed by Eugene Jarvis back in 1982, I don't think there's any doubt about it. This is considered a cult classic, and it comes into its own with the introduction of a two-player mode. If you enjoy a challenge, it's a must. Had to include this one, Juno first. One of my all-time favourites. Brings back all that nostalgia. Always loved the laser effect on this one. It was a while ago, but I think I first played this one in Wales, uh, a place called Prestaton. Fantastic times and a good game. I think the world knows this one as Kicker, but in the UK it was GR Kung Fu 2, Sholin's Road, and I absolutely love this. Played it in our local ice rink. I'm no fan of ice skating though. Good old Kung Fu Master. Proof the 1980s were awesome, and yet another game that defined the decade. If the enemies grabbed a hold of you, just waggle away until it breaks. The best kung fu game ever made. And even today, it's a true belter of a fighting game. The best there ever was. I absolutely love Ladybug. I've even got this on the ColecoVision. That arcade home conversion was absolutely flipping phenomenal. It's a dead ringer to Pac-Man. But you know what? It carved its own niche and it's quite tactical. I mean, you can't just steam in there. Patience is the key. Ah, they don't make them like Mappy anymore. Damn it, I miss the good old days. I also own this on the ColecoVision. Ah, that was another fantastic arcade conversion. You know, these are the games that time forgot. And thanks to emulation and the arcade archive series, people now are able to relive all the classics. A game about mice and cats. Completely bonkers, but it works. I purchased this for the Amstrad CPC. It was complete tosh, but the arcade version is absolutely brilliant. So addictive. Like everybody else in the 80s, I was obsessed with balls. Hey, say again? The graphics in Midnight Resistance are absolutely stunning. And the arcade conversion to the ZX Spectrum was beyond Herculean. And I know what you're thinking, he's got his rose tinted ZX Spectrum glasses on again. But with emulation only a click away, seriously try it for yourself and get back to me, let me know your thoughts. Absolutely terrific. Ah, what about Millipede, eh? Now, originally I thought I can't include this and Centipede, but there's enough in here to keep you going for weeks. And like the original, hunt this one down and play it with the trap ball. It's a superior experience and tough to beat. Missile Command, ah, no question. An all time classic. Yes, the graphics are relatively simplistic and uncomplicated, but gameplay is key, and this one is terrific. It's another game that featured in 1001 video games to play before you die. And get this, the successor, Missile Command 2, was never released in the arcades, which is a shame because it would have been a two player experience. And in the movie Terminator 2 Judgment Day, John Connery is shown playing Missile Command at the arcade mall. Ironically, a vision of what was to come. Good old Moon Crester. I had it on the Amstrad CPC and I really liked it. And just like the arcade, it was really difficult. But when compared to the arcade version, there is something missing. I think the arcade version gets the blood racing more. I still remember the title screen message, a trip to space war. Oh, and get this. The ZX Spectrum was the first home computer version. Wow, Moon Patrol. Now this one brings back some memories. And it's another that featured in 1001 video games. And in a strange turn of events, this game was completed but never released on the ZX Spectrum. It even got glowing reviews in Crash Magazine. And the game is credited with introducing parallax scrolling, can you believe it? It makes the list for that reason alone. I can talk for England, you've probably already guessed that. I just don't run out of things to say. Mr. Do is another classic. 
and it also featured in 1001 Video Games to Play, Before You Die, and in a reader's vote for Retro Gamer UK magazine, it was voted the 82nd best game of all time. Marvellous! Ah, uh, Pac-Woman. I mean, Miss Pac-Man. Or is that Mrs. Pac-Man? Well, the same argument raged at Midway until 72 hours before they launched the game where they finalised on Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man has all the thrills and spills of the original. And get this, it's everything Pac-Man should have been. And Miss Pac-Man reckons the ghost are more intelligent in her game. Ah, uh, Ninja Gaiden otherwise known as Shadow Warriors in the UK. Quite frankly, it's one of the best beat-em-ups to ever appear in the arcade. Your job is to take on an army of crazed psychos running riot around the streets of New York. If you like a good plot, forget Ninja Gaiden. For the rest of us, thumping good fun all round. Operation Wolf, another game that's featured in 1001 video games to play before you die. Shoot the birds and the pigs that scamper across the screen. There's armoured cars, helicopters, gunboats and a bazillion commies to kill. It's non-stop frantic action. Terrific, if very mindless fun. Yes, we love OutRun and its super scalar technology. It's hard to believe that this was released way back in 1986. Even today, it's still a great game for driving enthusiasts. There can be no doubt, OutRun is a timeless classic and a beautiful journey that everyone should experience. Just don't mention the Amiga arcade conversion. Don't! Oh! Packland is one of my favourite arcade games of all time. I was never prepared for navigating those water sections though. I remember I purchased this on the Amstrad CPC, but the Fairyland level was missing and to make matters worse, it didn't scroll. I was absolutely gutted. They butchered one of my favourite games of all time. Thank goodness for the Commodore 64 conversion and ultimately the arcade. In fact, the Commodore 64 version included almost every detail of the original, including the tunes and jingles. It's a simple but highly enjoyable game and it has its moments. At times, it's truly addictive. Before Sonic, before Mario and before my personal favourite, Dizzy, we had the original Ghostbuster, Pac-Man. Who would have thought eating pellets is still fun? Pac-Mania, Blinky, Pinky, Inky and Clyde are all back. Only this time in a 3D, fast-paced frenzy. Unlike the original Pac-Man, thanks to a bug, this one can be completed. That's not to say Pac-Mania is easy. In fact, our hero, Puckman, steady on, is up against some decent AI. And these buggers will keep you on your toes. Thank God you can jump. I remember the home conversions were also decent as well. Some say on the Amiga, the best ever. Paperboy is a must play classic. In a time where Atari were at its best. Your job, deliver the Daily Sun. I always liked the idea as a kid of slinging the newspaper in the front garden. The reality in the UK is you had to get off your bike and post the bloody thing in the letterbox. Was this a thing across all of America or was it a certain part of America? Still, this is one of my favourite games of all time and I loved the Amstrad CPC arcade conversion. If you're tired of Pengo, you're tired of life. At the time, I actually thought it was a really cute game and like Pac-Man, this is simple and quite addictive. Ah, oh, Phoenix. This was actually a really good game on the Atari 2600. Naturally, it was better in the arcade. And for the time, the sound is really well done. It was also the first time I saw a gigantic mothership. And while not very original, it's one of the better arcade games for its time. You can't match or beat the speed and thrills and skill needed to finally cross the finish line. Probably only Wet Le Mans comes close. Even today, it's smooth, fast, racing action. Pole position still looks the absolute business. If you're up for a serious challenge, give pole position a go. Not for the faint-hearted. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I lives in a caravan. <laughs> a good balance of violence and thinking. 
a great cartoon that's translated well to a video game. And they've absolutely nailed it because it all feels very familiar. And the good news is there's never a dull moment. So non-stop arcade fun with dangerously addictive depths. You can't talk about coin-op classics without mentioning Cuba, simply because it's one of the most original games ever made. But it's also the most infuriatingly difficult to grasp. Our protagonist manoeuvres with all the agile grace of a hot air balloon. But a skilled player will be able to see all Cuba has to offer. Ah, Rainbow Islands, one of the best. I love to study all about history, but history is all about how terrible the world used to be. When it comes to retro gaming, it's all about how great games used to be. Ah, uh, Rampage, this was one of the best arcade to home translations, especially on the Amstrad CPC and later on the Atari Lynx, because that was four player. In the arcade, it's fantastic though. Some might say the ultimate monster mash. My goodness, I love Raston. It's a hugely playable slash em up and the visual style is fantastic. Just look at it. I mean, this is ultra violence set in some of the most gorgeous locations ever seen. And don't forget, rock solid platform action has the just one more go factor. And I couldn't care less that it exercises my trigger finger more than my brain cells. Ah, they don't make them like road blasters anymore. Ridiculously fast action. In fact, you'll go faster than your brain can handle. It's a frantic nerve shredding assault on the senses. It's a boy racer's dream. And a bit like driving through Birmingham on a Friday night, there's a fantastic feeling of being amongst it. And by breaking the highway code, you'll stay alive. No spanners required. Robotron is weird and wicked. Enough to deserve it cult status. Sunbathing is a dumb idea, and so is developing robots and AI. We've all seen Terminator. The human race has been destroyed. There's only one family left, and it's up to you to kill all the robots and save the day. Epic. Blast off and fight the Bido Empire. It's fast and furious, and in my personal humble opinion, the ultimate shoot 'em up of all time. It looks great and moves damn quick with brilliantly designed weapons and levels. It will last eons, and it takes a strange kind of guy to tire of annihilating the Empire. Good old Scramble, quite possibly the best weapon in any game ever. You'll need your wits about you and move like greased lightning. There's plenty of variety between stages, and this still remains the Ferrari of arcade games. And shooting through walls of enemy remains hardcore. Go head to head with your mate and the game exerts a near demonic pull over your time. Naturally you can't beat the real thing, but it's done so well and two player scraps can be just as fun. There's also a great bonus system which all adds up to a great sim. You can't beat a bit of slap fight. And the game's ideas and weapons were later inherited by both Truxton and Grindstormer. There's even an enhanced port for the Sega Mega Drive. I had it back in the day on the Amstrad CPC, and I absolutely love that version, but not everybody agreed, as Abelor Games released Alcon 2020 for the Amstrad CPC. Solomon's Key, another game I had for the Amstrad back in the day, converted by US Gold, it played an absolute blinder. And like the arcade original, featured a clever and intuitive control system. The graphics might not wow today, but it's still just as much fun as ever. And one of the most entertaining games in the arcade. Still mad for it. Ah, Space Harrier. I've never left the fantasy zone. I can't believe this came out in 1985, in the sense that it felt head and shoulders over everything else. Seriously, back in the day, this was an absolute crowd stopper. But even now, the speed blows me away, and it's still a sight for sore eyes. Ah, uh, Space Invaders, the daddy of fixed shooters, and it still plays a blinder. It also helped usher in the golden age of arcade video games. And Space Invaders earned Taito profits over 500 million. Ah, Spy Hunter, an old top-down driving arcade game from the 80s. And if this was a James Bond game, I think it would be called From Rush Hour with Love. And just like in real life, 
Choppers drop power-ups from the sky. Better still, your car sticks to the road like glue whilst travelling at breakneck speeds. Without question, one of the coolest arcade games ever made. This is Defender 2, a fabulous upgrade over the original as the gameplay and coding on Stargate are more refined. Who doesn't love Star Wars? In fact, playing the game is almost as good as watching the movie. I mean, for me personally, this is one of the best licensed games ever. And I remember the yoke stick had unbelievable tight controls. I'm still desperate to purchase the arcade one up sit down arcade cabinet in all its vector glory. Super Hangon, otherwise known as Super Klingon. <laughs> it's still brilliant and it's really fast. Easily the best motorbike game I've ever played. And the arcade conversion to the ZX Spectrum was phenomenal. And then there's the Amiga version, which felt arcade perfect until the home conversion for the Mega Drive came along. Prepare to soil your racing suit. Super Sprint, I had this for the Amstrad CPC. When compared to the arcade original, it didn't compare. I think only the Atari ST got close. A high level of skill is needed to take the checkered flag and unlock those hidden extras. Corners need to be taken at a crawl and you won't get a whiff of success unless you kill that acceleration. Crashing is commonplace. Good old Tapper. It's games like this that made the arcade a great place to visit. It's one of the most addictive games I think I've ever played. And you have to play it, i.e. approach it, in the same way you would a game like Tetris. It needs strategy and quick thinking. I played it on the ColecoVision and then later on the Amstrad CPC. Both, from memory, were absolutely brilliant. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's a surprisingly deep beat them up with enough polish to impress everyone. The sprites are beautifully detailed with animated graphics throughout. The games are hoot in multiplayer as well and adept players will be involved in some titanic battles. What we have here is rock solid beat em up action. Cowabunga! I think outside of the Tetris original Game Boy version, this is the best I've played. It's a fantastic version from Atari. They did a conversion to the NES as well, but only 100,000 copies were released as Nintendo filed a lawsuit because of licensing. Some say best game ever. Tempest. Probably the best vector coin-up machine outside of Star Wars. The game's difficulty curve advances smoothly. It's not only one of the best games ever released by Atari, but one of the best games ever. Time Pilot. This is all about time travel. And if you like Bosconian, this is right up your street. It looks guff, but it flies like a fighter pilot's wet dream. Smooth, simple controls, and no brain shooter. I can't believe that Track and Field was released in 1983. It feels later. Anyway, there are six championship events and you can play up to four players using the four run buttons. Arcade athletes will love track and field. It's still the ultimate game for wrist and finger action. I like to think there's a Usain Bolt in all of us. Truxton is a shoot em up where memorization is the key. This one was met with a mixed response from the critics. I've no idea why, because I absolutely love it. It's a no frills arcade blast, I'll give them that. But for me, it's a white knuckle ride, packed to the rafters with action. I bought Sega's Turbo on the ColecoVision with the steering wheel and pedals. They did a damn fine conversion, but nothing touches the speed, i.e. pace, of the arcade original. In 1981, this was king of the video road, and the arcade cabinet lifted this one to greatness. I loved Turbo Outrun in the arcade. The critics of the time will have you believe it was nothing more than a clapped out Robin Reliant. I also really rate the Commodore 64 conversion as well. And the Sega Mega Drive conversion isn't as bad as everyone makes out. I was lucky enough as well to own the 3DS version, the Japanese only release. For me, a racing classic. Ah, UN Squadron. There's a good choice of aircraft, plenty of power-ups, the sound is fantastic, and the graphics impress. 
it's also without question probably the best side scroller shoot em up on the Super Nintendo. If you want to game inside and outside of the arcade with plenty of challenge, then this is the one for you. Yes, better than Super R-Type. Wetly Mans. For those of us out there old enough to remember the spin cabinet, you already know how amazing this game is. It's a fast and realistic arcade racing simulation. It has the sophistication and the thrills. Great graphics and fantastic speed. Gentlemen, start your engines. Ye are Kung Fu, what a game. In Mandarin, it stands for One Two Kung Fu. I also had the Amstrad CPC version and it contained an extra level, the temple. It was one of the best arcade conversions on the Amstrad and the arcade conversion helped pave the way for future fighting games. Now that's a proud legacy. Some might say I saved the best till last and whilst I thoroughly enjoyed doing this video it's nice to finally reach the end. But what about Zaxane? What a game. A must for all budding space pilots. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video. Congrats for making it this far. Please don't forget to leave a comment. Maybe share your experience. Also please don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, ta a bit!